So yeah, stands for yet another flow meter. Uh, we talked about some of the optional features, uh, where you get it, converting it, and what does the YAP flow mat look like. Okay. So yeah, like I said, you go from PCAP to IP fix format. And it can also be run on the wire, on live traffic if you want to. The optional features is a bi-flow extension, application labeling, operating system detection, and deep packet inspection. And these links are on all the, here's the main app, the documentation. It has a pretty good man file as well. Uh, the app labeling and the app DPI pro, if you want more. The next slide, please. So YAP application labeling. So there's many tools we'll be tying in here. Um, it'll support YAP ski, which we'll get to. RW flow pack, flow cap, raw IP fix to silk, which is a silk YAP tool. And it, all it, that does is add an additional column on the right. Here's what I was saying. So if you want to see how it does it, just open up your VM and go to user local etsy yeah, application rules.com. And you can see it more or less looks like this. It's pretty simple. It's uh, a label, your regular expression, or a label, a plugin, a signature. Here's what like the port 81 looks like. Here's what the DNS one looks like. This is app label, not DPI. DPI is a new slide then. Can I just add that the app label, like the label for HTTP is 80, which is sort of an unfortunate choice because you know, 80 is often used for HTTP, but not always. You know, uh, so just be aware of that if you're looking at it. It says 80, but it means they should be it's the same thing for all the protocols. Or if you're feeling ambitious and wanting to write your own. <laughs> well, uh, next slide. Yeah. Can you tell me how to open a terminal on the... Yeah, uh, yeah Control-Alt-T. Thank you. Pop up. Yeah, very cool. Um, so, T0F, the oh, last fingerprint. Like I said, it was it's passive identification using lib POF. It's their own weird role of POF. Uh, when you actually compile it, it has their version and the original one in there. Use theirs. And how it does this is based on packet size, window size, flags. And if you're actually curious how low level, just pop into the user local FD and open up the p0.fd file. You can go into more detail there. Uh, DHCP fingerprinting can be found here if you're curious. Um, and the output is used with the YAP file in here. Unfortunately, on the VMs, I don't have this installed. I could not compile it for the life of me. I did it on every version of Fedora I could grab, Debian. Um, I think Willie actually found bugs in the make file. Yeah. So um, you can email the, the woman who wrote it, or you, you can try it and get it to run. First person will buy a flash. So, uh, next slide. So here's the DPI that Drew was mentioning. Uh, it's deep packet inspection. I'm familiar with it. And how that works is you have app labeling has to be on when you compile it. And it's different per application. So the kind of deep packet inspection it will do for your HTTP is different than DNS. And in order to do it, you just throw in this command at the end of it. And also, if you want to specify only specific features, not DNS, you can say that. Or the example here is. DNS 80 and 421. So I notice that you put like your labels to be port numbers, but they have to be port numbers. Yeah, if you want to say specific ones, unfortunately. Yeah. If you go to the man page for it, what about like HTTP over an extended port? It's a great question. I don't know. I do not know. Uh, we could probably test that pretty quickly though. <laughs> if you do that, well you're good. Let me know what the, the outcome is. Uh, yeah, the app labeling does it on port, and if it relies on app labeling, it probably indicated that as well. Okay, next slide. So, more, this is the kind of general info you get. It's not complete. If you want to see more, check out the links or check out the man page. Um, but for FTP, you're going to get your kind of commands and reply information. HTTP, all the info seen there. Note that you get the user agent string. Uh, location, response header, response code, any cookie headers could be useful. Uh, for email, IMAP, uh, command and response, number of messages, let's see the login and password. SSH, it only gets you version number. So I don't know how useful that is. Uh, maybe someone's using a non standard SSH client or something. I don't know. Uh, DNS, query response information, header fields. 
And again, all this information is on your VM. So if you want to go to user local Etsy, yeah, DPI rules.com, open it up. Uh, you're welcome to look at that. So, uh, so there's a search for numbers. Is there any way you can convince it to pull it? change the information? Uh, you have to probably uh, change the code and write your own. But not the code. No. But all the code's there. So if you're feeling ambitious. Uh, next slide. So here's what it looks like. Uh, through here's here's the FTP one. So you can kind of see label, it'll be yeah, and then your regular expressions that you want. So then there's that file I gave you has these for every protocol. Next slide. So <laughs> how do you get yeah? Um, the easiest way is they have a live CD, an old version of the door, I think it's 14. So if you just want to get it and kind of play with it. Uh, the RPMs are available for Fedora 15 and Red Hat 5. Uh, if you do want to compile it from source, have fun. Some of the dependencies are only on their website. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Um, I can help you out. But it is compiled on all your uh, student VMs. Next slide. So, all right, the actual commands. So it's pretty simple. You just do yap. Uh, there should be two hyphens there. So hyphen hyphen in your file name and then what you want out. And if you want these additional things, such as the application labeling, you just add app label rules and this to the end of it. Same thing with POF, DHCP, deep packet inspection. And if you're unsure, just search the uh, man page, man yap or man yap DPI for additional information. Of course, you're familiar with the fix. What is that? IP fix. IP fix is that NetFlow version 10. I think it's on slide. Oh, the first one. It's the latest version. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's the same thing Silk uses, so um, it is much more uh, with the columns or fields. So the stack that you showed there on yep. the slide. Perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Just a quick question on the, the max payload. I'm assuming that's how far into the flow it will look for the data. Yeah. Um, the, the, on the defaults on the man pages recommend 300. I did 400. Um, I did not see a difference. Um, will that, does it actually take all of those bytes and include it in the flow record, or does it just use that to parse out? I think it, that's I think it's for parsing purposes. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll get back to you on that. But great question. But I guess, well, probably yeah. just parsing. Yeah. But great question. Right, next slide. Okay, so if you want to look at your output, yeah, unless you use the silk tools, you're going to have to convert it to ASCII. Or if you want to throw it up in Splunk or any kind of log consolidation tool, uh, it's, it's simple. The ASCII file name, so you get a file name, dot yap, dot text, I believe. Um, however, if you use the, the additional plugins, you're going to need that other tool there. So next slide. So here's what it looks like. Uh, you can do it yourself. Uh, there should be, if you open up the VM, um, like, I think the file is in, is there a data directory on the VM? No, I'm holding. Yeah. Uh, data. Okay. Under the app folder. I see, uh, and then you do just less, uh, uh, iPod, DPI, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So if you want to look through that as we're, we're doing the slides, so um, back to the top one, please. So you have looks like this. So you have your timestamp information, and your duration. You're going to have, if it's TCP, this is you know, protocol specific here. So you're, it's going to say what protocol it is, your source ID, the, the direction, remember earlier, yep. where it's going, and destination port. So this one was. 10.65 on um, whatever starting port to port 8, so probably web. Um, this, I believe, is the sequence number. So if you do man, yeah, um, TCP, I think that's the first field there. And these are your flags. So this indicates on one end, the Denison flag, and the other one responded with acknowledge, push, and reset. If you have VLANs, it'll tell you what VLAN it was on here, which is really neat. And this is, let's see. Packets and the number of the bytes, and also what direction it was. And then if you had app label enabled, you'd see port 80 right here. 
So next slide. So here's another TCC one, which is just a reset. So see how things are different? So there's no duration here. It says when it was done. You have TCP again, direction, to here. This one was what, 443 to this high level one. Um, sequence number empty here. Acknowledge reset, nothing response. One packet, 40 bytes, going in that direction. Okay, so we have the, the 40 bytes there, the, the header. I have a question. Mind that that header included in the size. Next slide. Here's how UDP looks. So, again, timestamps for duration. Hey guys, we, there's a question online. Uh, I don't know if you heard them or not. Sorry, I'm not sure if you hear me. I just had a question uh, on the previous slide. There was some VLAN information. The TCP slide? And I, yes, the first TCP okay. slide. How, um, given that NetFlow has, you know, this the source IP, destination IP, ports, TCP flags, and so forth, where does it get the VLAN information from? The VLAN information is what? That's packet, right? The packet level. The VLAN? Yes, yeah. the VLAN yeah, tag is usually in the uh, layer 2 header. Yeah, so the question was, how does it get the, pa uh, the VLAN information? Now, if I remember right, so VLAN, does it encapsulate the packet, the IP packet? You can do things where, like, VLAN, no, VLAN, VLAN, VLAN has to be on certain networks. Yeah. So, so the VLAN, the VLAN is ID is typically the, uh, uh, Yeah, include the... Bill, can you repeat his question? We're having a little hard time hearing him. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm on a really disadvantaged link right now. Um, but the... The VLAN ID is typically in the layer two header, uh, the VLAN tag. Um, so it's, it never makes it to the layer three uh, header, and I thought that's what NetFlow picks up. So my question was, um, how do you get the VLAN information from NetFlow data? Oh, interesting. So uh, the question was, where do you, where is the app getting the VLAN tag from? And or the student asked or say that the VLAN or the layer two, which makes sense. Um, so yeah, I guess it's going down to that layer that I convert. Yeah, so keep in mind YAP is running over either on the wire or running over PCAP. So it's got all that information. Usually for that call, you're just pulling out layer three and four information. But YAP goes in and actually pulls out that VLAN information in layer two as well. Does that okay, so in that example, um, it was Yes, in that example, that data was not pulled from NetFlow, it was pulled from PCAP. Say that one more time. Did you hear that? I'll, I'll type it. Um, I'm going to type it because it's uh, hard for me to speak. Uh, I have a very slow link here. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks. You guys know what VLANs are? Anyone? Everyone knows what it is? Okay. Basically, you can break up your switches. So the question is, in the example, the VLAN data came from PCAP and not NetFlow. Yes, so keep in mind, the app is running over either uh, PCAP that you previously pulled off the wire or it's listening on the interface and running over the PCAP. And it's producing NetFlow. Um, it's also producing the PCAP inspection records if you've got that turned on. And additionally, uh, you know, looking through your layer 2 stuff as well, pulling that out. Another question on here, uh, how good are the signatures for POP? Uh, so they, they have their own role of it. So if you go to the slide, you can actually look at it if you have the VM. Yeah, I'm going to move the slide up. These are local edits. Can you guys read or see my VM up there? I want to make the font a little bigger. A little bit bigger? Okay. Edit profiles. Is that better? Yeah. Cool. Um, thanks, Drew. So this is me, so I can start. 
I don't know what tweaks they've done. And you could probably do a dip on the files. I think it might be in the downloads directory, or you can grab it off their website. Um, they have both versions. The original P0F on the install instruction says, don't use that one, use our role. So. Next question. Cool. Well, Yeah. Oh, so yeah, UDP. So it's much simpler than the other ones. Um, again, timestamp, UDP, source, source port, or you know, source port where it's going, number of packets, bytes, where it's going. And here's that app label one we talked about right here. 